Hello and welcome to Sports News Africa, the home of Africa's sporting conversation. Let's take a look at some of the stories making headlines across the African continent. Mohari Kruder sets his sights on a Tour de France spot with MTN Kubeka. Nigeria's national table tennis tournament looks for new talent in Abuja. Thank you for watching Sports News Africa. I'm Angela Agor. Eritrean cyclist Mahawi Kudus is not a name familiar to sport enthusiasts in Africa, but those in the know believe the 21-year-old is one of the hottest talents in cycling. The MTN Kubeka rider, who's best known as a climber, finished 10th place in the Tour of Malora in January this year behind his teammate Steve Cummings of England. He also impressed at the Tour of Yorkshire in England last weekend, despite arriving only 25 minutes before the race start in Bridlington because of travel and visa problems. Kudus is targeting a spot on MTN Kubeka's team for the Tour de France in July. We can now speak to MTN Quebec's Mahari Kudus. Mahari, what's your background? How did you come into cycling? Wow, well, when I start cycling, when I go to the school, normally I go by bike. And yeah, when I finish the bike with my friends, they did some competition like friends. Then I need a tries. Bicycle is really famous in the local race. So I go to see the race and uh, I follow the race. Then I start with my friends, became a How excited are you at the possibility of racing in the most famous cycling race in the world, the Tour de France? Yeah, I'm really, really excited. Normally our team is getting to the Tour de France. But normally when I was in Eritrea, when, you know, before I start, just I know only Tour de France. That's when I came in Europe, I know all of the races, but when I was in Utah, just I know only to be honest. Now, yeah, I hope to be getting after two months, but I'm really, really excited. <clears throat> What's the atmosphere like in MTN Kubeka between the riders as the first African team to make it to the Grand Tour? Yeah, the atmosphere is really, really good, like uh, family and friends. Also, yeah, for the true fans, it's still good preparation from all material and uh, good motivation from all of us. So, yeah, the atmosphere is I really, really like it. You've been racing in the European Tour this year. How's that gone? Yeah, next week, is, uh, I start, he started in 13 May until 17. Is five stage races with TT bike, individual TT bike. Yeah, it's also good for selected for the Tour de France. So, yeah, I will be ready for that. It's up, up hill, not really up hill, but up and down some. And yeah, most of it's flat, but I go for support to the team and uh, to help the team. What are the differences between racing on the European circuit and racing in Africa? Yeah, with Africa, is normally the amount of the riders is in Africa is quite quite few because yeah, in Europe is most like 200 riders, but in Africa is like 100, 220. Also, in Europe, is the road is sometimes quite narrow and technical, and with cold weather, rain uh, in Africa is not really cold. They have rain, but not cold. Also, the road is nice, not like, yeah, for example, I did Iksha last week. Yeah, we run about a lot of traffic, I land too much corners, yeah. So this is the difference. And what are your ambitions for the future? <clears throat> yeah, for the future, still I'm um, second year professional. Uh, I want to do all races, then I hope some races like Le to Dauphine or some world, world races, I will be some good results. Also to France stage winner. Mahavi, thank you for very much for speaking to Sports News Africa. The 11th ASO Table Tennis Club National Championship began at the Abuja National Stadium with over 200 players taking part in the tournament. The tournament organizer, Awu John Olusegun, said he hopes the tournament will raise the profile of the game in Nigeria.
over 200 table tennis players from 25 states in Nigeria are participating in the 11th edition of the Aso Table Tennis Club National Championship in Abuja, Nigeria. The annual tournament, which kicked off on May 5th, is crucial to the development of table tennis in the country, say organizers. The motive actually is to develop first is to uh, identify and develop young talents why we encourage known talents because we know that the more exposure in terms of competition they, they get the better for them in improving and also in their ranking in the world ranking the 11th edition of the tournament was slated for May 2014, but due to a bombing attack by Boko Haram militants in Abuja, it was postponed. Players and coaches are happy that the tournament has resumed. More tournaments need to come up so that the players can use that to assess themselves. If I'm performing well, I will know. If I did not do well in this competition, by next month, if there's another competition, I want to struggle to go beyond what I have done now. The national event also provides an opportunity for players from more remote areas of the country to shine. We from the east, we don't get much encouragement. We don't at all. No sponsor, no not. Most times competition. They will send us letter, but there will be no sponsor. Our council, they cannot sponsor us individually, unlike the um, West, as in Lagos. They have this bank that sponsored them, Union Bank, that helped them, encourage most of the clubs, you know, understand, but here, nothing. So it kills most of us. Plans are also underway for future editions of the event to feature international players, but standards need to improve fast. We started very, very, very slow, or at a very low level, local level. Now it is national. Our aim is to get it into the ITTF ranking uh, standard. So that whoever wins here, we also have points which will help in their uh, ranking in the world. It is also hoped that the attention focused on the sport during the ASO tournament will help Nigeria table tennis attract more local sponsorships and ensure it has a higher media profile in the future. Time now to take a look at some of the other stories making the headlines across the continent. Athletics Kenya has come under fire for their controversial new criteria that compels athletes to feature in domestic meetings in order to be selected for the national team. It follows their dismal performance in the World Relay Championships in the Bahamas. Kenya dropped from third last year to seventh, with top athletes Aspel Kiprop and Ronald Kemoy withdrawing. Zimbabwe could participate in the All-Africa Games in Congo Brazzaville in September without being fully prepared. The Zimbabwean authorities say they are struggling to get the funding together despite a request for government intervention. Zimbabwe is expected to send close to 200 athletes for the Games. The Confederation of African Football and the Qatar Football Association have signed a five-year cooperation deal for the development of football between the two organizations. The accord, signed by CAF President Issa Hayatou and the QFA President Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Thani, will focus on exchanging expertise in administration and coaching. And Blessing Okabari has criticized the Nigerian authorities for importing foreign athletes with a Nigerian athlete with a Nigerian heritage for competitions instead of developing home-based talent. Okabari, who anchored Nigeria's gold medal winning 200 meters relay team in the Bahamas, voiced her concerns on social media. Instructors appointed by FIFA have been in Somalia for a high-level training and fitness test for up to 30 local and international Somali referees. The training comes at a time of increased participation in sport as the country continues to recover from years of conflict. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. 
Somalia's recovery from civil war has been a difficult one, with militants still staging occasional attacks and even running some parts of the country. But in the capital Mogadishu, the transformation is startling, and the reemergence of sporting activities is one of the clear indications things are really approaching normality. So the recent presence of two FIFA instructors from Egypt and Jordan in Mogadishu to conduct a three-day high-level training course for 30 local and international Somali referees was seen by local sports officials as another sign that the country has turned the corner. This shows that there is peace in the country. Somalia has hosted a FIFA grassroots football training for boys. In 2014, an MA course was also held here, and now you can see another MA course being conducted by FIFA. The head of FIFA Africa Referee Development is here and will be with us for three days. FIFA has been coming because peace in Somalia has been improving, and we hope to undertake more training in other regions as well. Ahmed Al-Shanawi from Egypt is a FIFA instructor and Africa Regional Development Officer, while Hassan Mohamed Hassan is a Jordanian FIFA fitness instructor. Al-Shanawi said the program was a vote of confidence in Somalia. There is a period for Somalia that was not good and Somalia was very, and it wasn't in the image of the of FIFA for courses. So now FIFA are happy, very happy, and also the... This year, I think FIFA send, have sent a lot of things very good for the referees, and next year, inshallah, we'll send more and more. FIFA supports Somalia with such high-level technical trainings and has in the past provided material support too, like the construction and carpeting of Banadir Stadium. Somalia has three football divisions that bring together over 20 football clubs. <laughs>